This week, it's another week of multiplication, except this time we're going to be multiplying larger numbers. We're gonna multiply a two-digit number and a one-digit number. I'm gonna show you a few different strategies and it's up to you to pick the strategy that works best for you. Does this look like a mess to you? Because this looks like a mess to me. But this is what happens when we use a strategy that we used last week called equal groups to help us solve a problem that has one digit by a two digit number. Now these two factors, I used the strategy that we used last week. I found my smallest factor six and I made six groups. And then, well, I put 32 tallies in each group. Now, if I counted really, really carefully, would I get a correct answer? Yes, but chances are I'll probably count it wrong. So I wanna use three different strategies this week to show you three different ways that you can solve a one digit by two digit multiplication problem. This strategy I'm gonna call equal groups. Now, instead of drawing four groups of 32 individual tallies, when I use the strategy equal groups, I'm again going to find my small factor. This time I'm comparing 32 and four, Four is the smaller factor, so that's gonna tell me that I need to draw four groups. Now, I'm not going to draw 32 individual tallies in each one of these circles. Otherwise, it gets really messy, as you just saw. Instead, I'm going to use my place value blocks. Remember, this is a 10 and these are ones. So if I look at this number, I have 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. So when I build 32, I need three tens, 10, 20, 30, and two ones. And I'm gonna make sure I line them up nice and neat. And I'm going to put 32 in each one of these circles. Now that I have my equal number in each group, I'm going to count them up. Now remember, these are tens blocks, so we need to count by 10. So I'm gonna count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, and I'm gonna underline that 10 since I already counted it, and I'm gonna jot down that I have 100 so far. Then I'm gonna add on the rest of my tens blocks, 10, 20. So all together in tens, I have 120. Then I'm gonna count up my ones blocks. Now remember, these are ones, so I count by one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm gonna line this up in my ones place, not in my hundreds and not in my tens. And I'm going to get my product is 128. 32 times four equals 128. That's one strategy. Let's try another. The next strategy I want to show you is what's called the box method. Now this is a method that students will often use in fourth grade, and I have talked to some of the fourth grade teachers and this is the one that they really like to use. I'm gonna show you two different ways that you can use the box method. One being if you don't know your math facts yet, and the second being if you do have them memorized, making it a little bit easier. So when I do 43 times three and I use the box method, the first thing that I need to do is draw, well, a box. Now that I have my box, I'm gonna divide it up so I have my tens and ones. I'm gonna move this multiplication problem to the top just so it's a little bit easier for me to see. When I use the box method, I'm going to split up my tens and ones. So I look at my number right here, 43, and if I was to write this in expanded form, it would be 40 plus three. So that's what we're going to write on the top of our box, 40 and three. We're gonna multiply it by three, so I'm gonna put my three on this side. Now I'm going to do different multiplication problems in each of these boxes. First, I'm going to do three times three. So I'm going to draw that out using my picture like we practiced last week. Next, I'm going to do three times 40, which means I need three groups. And again, I'm not going to draw 40 individual tallies in each of these circles. It gets really messy and it gets crazy. Instead, I'm going to draw four tens in each circle. Now I'm going to count up my tens and then my ones. Remember, these are tens blocks, so I'm going to count by tens. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 
90, 100, 110, 120. And I'm gonna jot that over here so I don't forget it. Then I'm going to count my ones. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So I have 120 and nine, and when I add it up and I very carefully line up my numbers, I get my product of 129. I'm again going to use the box method to solve this problem, only because I wanna show you what happens when I know my math facts and how much easier that makes solving this problem. Again, I've drawn my box, and now I'm gonna split up my 52. If I were to write 52 in expanded form, I would have 50 plus two, and I'm multiplying by three. Now, I've practiced my math facts a lot, so I don't have to draw a picture of two times three. I just know, because I practiced, two times three equals six. I also know what three times 50 is, because I know three times five equals 15, and if I have 15 tens, that's gonna get me to 150. Then again, over here, I'm gonna add up 150 plus six. I can use my mental math. I know 150 plus six is 156. The last strategy I want to show you, it's called the traditional strategy. And if parents are watching this video, this is probably the strategy that you learned in school. The traditional method tells us that first we're going to multiply our ones place. We multiply these numbers here, two times nine. And I know my facts and I know that two times nine equals 18. And we can't write an 18 down here because we can only have a single digit in the ones place. So I have eight ones and I'm going to add on a 10 because 18 means eight ones and one 10. Then I'm going to multiply my two to my tens place. Two times two is four, but I can't forget to add on my 10 up here, five. So 29 times two has the product of 58. I'm gonna solve three different problems using those different strategies. But as I'm solving these problems, I'm going to show you a problem and I'd like you to pause in the video, try to solve the problem on a piece of notebook paper or a whiteboard and then see if you get the same product that I do. Now, it doesn't matter if I use the box method or if I use the traditional method, you use whatever method you want to and we'll just compare products at the end. Let's start with the problem 24 times four. I'm going to first use what we call the equal groups method first to see if I can get the correct product. In equal groups, I look at my two factors, I find my smallest one, which is four, and I'm going to draw four groups. Next, I'm going to put 24 in each group, but I'm not going to put 24 tallies in each of these circles. There has to be a better way, and that better way for me is going to be drawing my tens blocks and my ones blocks. Now that I have 24 in each of my four groups, I'm gonna count my tens first. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80. And I'm gonna jot that down. Then I'm gonna count my ones. I'm gonna count by twos because I have groups of twos. Two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. And when I add up my ones and add up my tens, I find that my product of 24 times four is 96. Here's your next problem. Decide if you're going to solve this using equal groups, the box method, or the traditional method. Here's my solution. I'm going to use the traditional method this time, which means I'm gonna put my two digit number on top, put my multiplication sign, and then line up my five with my ones place. First, I'm gonna multiply my ones place. Nine times five is 45. I can't write a 45 here because I can only have one digit in my ones place. So I have to put my four up in the tens place. Then I'm gonna multiply five ones by three tens. That gets me to 15 or 150. And I need to add four on, which gets me to 19. So in my tens place, I'm gonna have 100 
In my tens place, I'm gonna have 19, which gets me to 195. Here's our last problem, 56 times four. You probably can guess which method I'm going to use to solve, but you try a method and see if you get the same product. I'm going to use the box method this time to solve my problem. So first, I'm gonna draw my box. I'm gonna split up my 56 into expanded form. 50 and six, and I'm multiplying by four. I'm gonna first draw a picture in my ones and I'm going to do four groups of six objects. Next, I'm going to do four groups of 50, but I'm not gonna draw 50 tallies in each of these circles. Instead, I'm going to put my five tens. Now it's a big job. I have to count all of this up. When I'm counting my tens, remember that I need to count each of these as a 10 block. So I'm gonna count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I'm gonna jot that up here so I don't forget about it. Starting back at zero, 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. Jot that up here so I don't forget about it. And I'm looking in this box here, 100 plus 100 gets me to 200. So I have 200 so far. Then I come over here to my ones. Now these are ones and I drew them as tallies just so it was easier for me to count. If it's confusing to you to count the tens and the ones, you can also just put your ones blocks like this. Either way works. I just grouped my five so it's easier to count right now and I can count five, 10, 15, 20. Then I need to count on my ones. So five, 10, 15, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24. So in my ones, six times four is 24. Now I have 200 plus 24. You can either do that in your head or if you need to, jot it up here to add it up. And all together, we'll find that 56 times four is 224. Hopefully you got that too. As you're solving the problems this week, remember, you choose what strategy works best for you. Do you want to use equal groups? Do you want to use the box method? Do you want to use the traditional method? Use whichever strategy you are the most successful with, but don't feel like you have to solve each problem using all three strategies. Pick a strategy, get really good at it, and really practice those multiplication facts this week. Can't wait to see what you do.